Good morning, everybody. It is December and I'm so excited because it's the holiday month. So welcome. This is the Braid and Tinker podcast. My name is Melanie and I am a software developer and a knitter. And this is a video podcast mainly about knitting. Uh, sometimes I throw in other stuff. <sighs> I have actual notes because... Uh, I haven't podcasted in a long time because I was super busy at work. We are running a new project and the deadline is December 1st. It needs to be uh, December 31st, sorry, end of December, January 1st. Everything needs to be live. Um, the projects that my team was uh, supposed to be doing are actually on time. So we, for the sort of like honor of being absolutely on time with our stuff we now get to join in on the crazy and help other teams finish stuff so obviously we're going to do that because you know we're all one big department but it feels like we're kind of being punished for being on time except for the work thing i'm super excited about christmas and like um all the december festivities um we have in the Netherlands, we celebrate Sinterklaas, which is similar. Um, it's being celebrated on December 5th. I don't really celebrate that because um, I, although I've lived in the Netherlands all my life, um, I grew up in a British family and it was not really, we did, I think, a little bit of Sinterklaas so that we wouldn't feel left out at school. Um, and so I'm doing the same with my son. Um, we're doing like a little bit of Sinterklaas and then on December 5th we're going to just give him a little present and then you know say Sinterklaas is now leaving the country because he lives in Spain and he's going on his boat bye bye sing the song and then sort of like that he feels that it has started and is over it because you cannot really get away from these things even if you don't celebrate it at your house because he goes to daycare and there's like one there's like tons of other kids there who are super excited because what you can do with Sinter class is like you put your shoe out and you write a letter to Sinter class and you put some um you put in a carrot for the horse and then um the next day you get present and that happens like a couple of times in the run up to Sinter class so it's like for like two three weeks kids are like completely mental um so uh, yeah they're like talking about oh did you put your shoe they're like three-year-olds and they are discussing what presents they get in their shoe from Cinder class and then at daycare there it's itself they you know they sing the songs and they put on a cd and stuff like that and the kids get a little present when they're there so I know they try not to be super pushy, but if I was someone who was like, this is not something that we celebrate, you know, it would be very hard to escape it. So we just celebrate it a little bit, like enough that my son doesn't feel left out, but we are not super interested in it, but oh well. Um, But I love Christmas because Christmas is my favourite time of year, hence the fairy lights. I will get into the knitting. I'm actually drinking Christmas tea, which is delicious. One more thing. I've changed my um, Instagram username. It used to be Melanie Knits. It's now just Braid and Tinker. So I am Braid and Tinker on everything. On Ravelry, on Etsy, on Instagram, on Twitter. I think that's it. Braid and Tinker, just like the same thing everywhere so sorry if you've like been having trouble finding me on instagram or something like that it used to be melanie underscore knits everything is braid and tinker now it's just the same one thing i want it to be easy and clean and simple and so that's that um knitting so uh last time i had started the vintage fairy light socks which is a pattern by helen stewart from curious handmade and i have finished them because i am a crazy sock knitter person 
this is them they haven't been blocked yet i just put them on the blocker to show but they haven't i haven't actually like washed and blocked them yet but i think they are so pretty the yarn i used is called durable socks and it's um i think it's a dutch brand but i'm not super sure about that um and it is the I think it was vintage duck egg or duck egg blue something like that I think it's very very pretty and I was knitting them in this like simple because most people who knit this pattern use a um like a hand dyed speckled sock yarn um but I saw on the uh Goldberry Artisans um podcast that she had knit them in like a a solid light blue colorway and I thought it was so pretty so I immediately like literally I watched that and like five minutes later I went onto the, onto the internet to find some sock yarn that was similar so I finished these and I think they're so pretty I don't I'm not going to give these these are for me I'm going to keep these for myself because I think they are absolutely lovely I really love this little detailing it's really fun to do I like how the um what's this called twisted rib sort of flows into the sock pattern and then after you've done like this bit and then it goes into just a regular sock which I think is very comfortable this is nice in your shoe it's just that because these so socks are knit uh top down by the time you're here you are so sick of it because it's quite, this bit is quite a boring slog, I would say. This is the most interesting part and it's at the beginning, but that's usually the, the thing with um, pat knitting patterns. It's like those um, uh, yoke sweaters, you know, the interesting part is in the yoke and you do them uh, top down and then you have that finished in like three days because you're still so excited and it's a new project and then you have like like three months of knitting the stockinette body and the sleeves because it's not as fun as the yoke was but um those are my only finished objects because I was not super into doing a whole bunch of knitting I've been like distracted a lot with sock knitting um and I do have my Arboreal cardigan which I've still not finished so uh, I've gone quite far with it because this is actually a sweater pattern but I have steaked it so it is now a cardigan um sticking was fine uh it took a bit longer like putting up the um foundation crochet chain and i feel like it's made it a bit chunky tried to tack it down but i think that will sort of work itself out once i've blocked it and i might like do a little press on it and my idea is to in the end uh, cover all of that up with like some nice ribbon and just sew that on um i started doing the button band on this side no actually this side is finished so i think that looks pretty good and i need to do the button band on this side i had started doing it on this side um but i did something wrong and i can't really remember what it was anyway it looked silly so I just ripped it out and uh, that was pretty easy to do so that's this and then when I finished the button bands I put in the sleeves and then this cardigan will be finished which is I'm ready to wear this I'm just I haven't been feeling working on it for a little bit um that's just how that goes though I think sometimes you feel more into doing one project than another and that's why like having like several whips on the go I think is really great because you can just put stuff away for a little bit and then uh, work on it when you feel like it I feel like 
knitting is a hobby it shouldn't be it shouldn't feel like a job you know you don't have to if you don't feel like doing something just put it away do something else and come back to it when you feel like it again so yeah I wish I would finish it because then I could wear it but I just haven't felt like picking it up so oh well so I finished uh, knitting the vintage fairy light socks and I had quite some yarn left over from that so I've just uh, cast on a pair of um, ribbed socks for my son and it this might look dirty which would be correct um, because I was knitting on these and then my son thought it was a good idea to flung I like a cushion through the living room even though I had some tea on the table next to me and so there is like tea marks all over this yarn right now and it looks a bit gross and it's like I wouldn't say suck the fun out of this project but it just looks grubby and I know this will wash out when I block it it will not be a problem for the socks but yeah I guess that's just children and knitting they don't really go together unless your kids are a bit older I think but um which is a shame because tiny kids are super easy to knit for because their bodies are so small things are finished fast so those are going to be some socks for him and then he also needed some new mittens he's still wearing his mittens from last year which are a little bit small and a ton grubby because he is a little boy who loves digging in when he's outside at daycare they just like let them loose into the garden and the boys just I think the girls too actually I don't know why I mentioned you know girls just the same they just like put their mitts in water and then into the sand and dirt and it just gets so disgusting or he'll the like I don't know what they do it's like they put their hands in the bushes and then you pick them up and like the mittens are covered in shrub and it's weird anyway so I thought I'd knit him some new mittens and the first one is done and uh I just this is something like very weird and random I think this is like the weirdest uh uh thing I knit but I I really like uh Norse folk, folk tales so I grabbed a picture of Odin from the internet and made a, a like a design um uh, from it and so now he has an Odin mitten um the back has no thumb because thumbs and kids is like ugh, it's too much work it's not necessary they they don't need phones he's three he doesn't have car keys he doesn't have you know a house key he, he can have like a mitten to hide his fingers um and i put like the birds the two ravens that uh odin has to send out into the world and um spy on humans I put those on the side I think it turned out pretty well um, but it is kind of weird <laughs> and some people have commented like oh is that a, like an angry Santa no it's you can obviously see that he has one eye so it's Odin then the yarn I'm using for this is the Portuguese yarn uh, I think it's called Lobo Javier that a, a, a co-worker from of mine uh, brought back from Porto in Portugal and it's really really nice yarn uh, it's perfect for mittens because it's not like too soft and but it's soft enough for kids I think but it still has like a little um, it's a little bit toothy so it's good for colour work but it's it's definitely softer I would say than some of the um like something like Aroma Finalgarn or like a Tuku those are definitely more toothy than this this is a lot softer 
um, but it's too toothy enough that you can do the colour work nicely. It's not like a super slick merino where everything just kind of slides off each other, which is annoying. Oh, I brought up this bag. There's no actual product in this. Such useless. Um, one of the last projects I'm working on, which is, this has gotten a lot of my time, is the Resurrection Socks, which is a pattern by Salopalooza Knits. I think this is like third or fourth sock pattern that I've knit from her, uh, but I just really like her socks. This is a picture. I'm just using the chart because the, the sock pattern itself is for top down. I really like knitting my socks toe up, so I'm just using the chart. It does mean that the pattern is really upside down on my socks, but I don't think it really matters. And it also kind of depends on your angle. I mean, for me, looking down on my socks, the sock pattern is actually correct. So maybe everybody else's socks are upside down. Um, let me see if I can stick this in a blocker. So this is the socks, this is the pattern. So usually this would be the other way around, but um, on my socks it's like this. And then there's in the center spine up the top, there's some twisted rib uh, going on there. I think it's really pretty. This yarn is um, Peppermint Bark by Bird Street UK. Um, I got this a little while ago and I also ordered some of their e ephemera, ephemera, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. I botched that one, uh, which is also very, very pretty. Let me, let me go grab that for you. It's this one. I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. Um, this is the yarn. So pretty. I love this. I really love this. So beautiful. Um, so I'm saving this for something special. This is, um, yeah, just some Christmas socks, I think. It's because the name is Peppermint Bark. Every time I knit on this, I feel like having like hot chocolate with candy cane in it because that's so delicious. Chocolate and peppermint is like a perfect thing some people don't like it because they feel like they're eating chocolate um after they brush their teeth or something but i just find chocolate and peppermint the best combination oh, they don't, i'm super into these so they've been got, getting a lot of love and this stitch marker is one of my latest creations it is I've made a bunch of uh, gemstone stitch markers and they have these uh, D rings Let me just take that off which is like a big it's like an earring clasp um, and they're really good because you can use them as progress keepers as stitch markers and they can be used by knitters and um, crocheters as well so this one is an like an amethyst stone I have a bunch more um, and I just need to <sighs> get like some photography going and see about price I'm, I have no idea how I'm going to price these um, and like because do I want to sell like one stitch marker or do I want to sell like a little set of stitch markers or do I want to sell them as maybe like a necklace or some like a bracelet some type of jewelry and then you can use them so I'm not I I don't know yet so it's just it's something for the future but yeah coming up later gemstone stitch markers I'm really enjoying this it's much lighter than I had expected so it just it just looks really pretty on your knitting which is always something I enjoy where is that pattern here we go oh. 
so that was my last oh no wait that was my um last knitting work in progress i've also been doing some embroidery um and this is about where i am at the moment there's like a text very nice one to come down and then I've been doing this kind of Nordic style um, embroidery and this is this is going to be like a green border all around and my idea is that when it's finished I'm just going to make it into a pillow because I think it'll be nice so it's this is something that I pick up when I don't feel like knitting when I don't feel like playing video games when I don't feel like doing anything this than this so this is like a last thing but uh, I still I do really enjoy it and I'm actually surprised now that I've gotten into the because I felt like the the gray text was really slow I could not believe how little progress I was making I'm finding that the green is going a bit faster and maybe because I enjoy the shapes more um so it just feels faster I don't know it could also be because it's more condensed blocks of uh, stitches so you're just like closer together it just goes faster I think so there is that um somebody asked me on YouTube how my bullet channeling is going I don't really have anything to show at this point I think I'm just it's just something I enjoy I just pick it up once every so often like go through my calendar put things in or sometimes um I just put my son at the table and then he has his like crayons and you know can do his drawings and then I just do a little doodle in the bullet journal and color it in with um just some I have some like a big pack of Crayola super tips um so I'm really really enjoying that I haven't put much time into like hand lettering because I find that something that really needs time and um, sort of effort and practice, which is I'm not against. It's just that I haven't find, found a lot of time for that recently. So that's uh, where I am with that. Um, and then I think we can go on to giveaways because I had quite a few um last episode i had a giveaway for the tea and ice cream socks which is a pattern by uh julia from the happy knitting podcast and i there was a thread open and people could comment their favorite ice cream and um yeah i just did uh i didn't i did random number number generator it's just that I just coded, I, I didn't even code it myself. I just opened the uh, Ruby terminal and you can use the Ruby method called random. And then it just, you give it an, um, a range of numbers that you want to pick from uh, and it picks a random number from that, um, which is really useful because if you have a Ravelry thread, the first um, post is like my post and I don't want to win because I'm giving something away so it was good to you know be able to give a start and end number and then the uh, winner for that is Y the L not and um, I will message Julia today that she can send that pattern over to you and uh, a side note Julia is hosting a sweater knit along or a happy sweater along something like that uh, so if you are uh, knitting a sweater or want to knit a sweater totally go over there and join that knit along um, I think whips are allowed so you know it's very casual and um, I will be sending in some yarn as prizes so stay tuned for that if you want to win some yarn um and then the next giveaway i had was for the um bertie and poppet christmas bag let me tell you my mum has hinted that she really wants to win i was like you can't win you're my mother that's not how that works so sorry mum i'll get you something nice for christmas <laughs> it just made me laugh she was like 
<laughs> that bag is really nice. I wouldn't mind winning that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, I put uh, another Ravelry thread for that on the Braid and Tinker podcast Ravelry group thing on Ravelry. Um, and the prompt for that was uh, post your um, favourite Christmas memory or tradition. And a lot of you commented, I think this bag is super popular. So if you would like something like this i'm not sure if uh, jill has this particular bag particular bag sorry um but her etsy is um bertie and poppet and so this i think is the medium size bag so she has bigger bags and then let me see where is my i have this one this is one of the smaller her size bags and then i have another one that's also this size but i'm not currently using that but this is a medium size bag and i think they are fabulous they're really very pretty i love the fabrics i love the fabrics on the inside it's very well made love these bags i love the little ribbon detailing here um and this one has a, a button and a little bunny stitch marker so fabulous prize if you're happy anyway so i did random random number generator for that one too and the winner is diana seneca and she wrote something in dutch uh, but i translated it for you and she says during christmas we all sing all the christmas songs we know we light candles for the people we miss and we all bring something to eat always too much looking forward to christmas so that is lovely i have absolutely loved reading all these christmas memories and christmas traditions from everybody so <laughs> i'll just pick four to share with you this one is from any way to knit my favorite christmas tradition is putting out a plate of biscuits with a note saying santa's milk and beer is in the fridge and putting water and carrots outside for the reindeer I'm in Australia, so the milk needs to be in the fridge or it would go off. Happy knitting. Uh, this one is, I, I, I think this one is like my absolute favourite. It's from Chick Knit. Uh, and I think I'm going to steal this idea. She says, one of my favourite Christmas traditions is an advent calendar. Also, we do Christmas Eve gift openings, which is always a new pair of PJs. So everyone wakes up in fun new pyjamas on Christmas morning really love this she says um and then um i think it's mericina mericina she writes my favorite christmas tradition is being with all the family i love christmas and from two years ago also celebrate my baby's birthday on the 25th so congratulations about that also as i am spanish I love waiting for Melkor, Gaspar and Baltazar, uh, the three kings, on the 6th of January. I am 40 years old, but I am as excited as my kids. So I'm guessing people in Spain do something on the, for, for three kings. It's in the Netherlands, we don't really do anything about that. Um, the only thing is there's like this rule that you cannot have your Christmas tree up after 6th of January so um it's it's an unspoken rule though uh, there's also a rule that you cannot have a christmas tree before sinterklaas has come so sinterklaas comes on the the 5th of december and this year i think that's a wednesday that means that on the the following saturday the entire country is buying a christmas tree because people are waiting for their christmas tree and they are like slightly begrudging sinterklaas that they cannot have a christmas tree yet anyway oh and then the last one was from swedish grandma and she writes my favorite christmas tradition is going to church very early, early on christmas day morning which is called Julotta in swedish and sing the special christmas carols see all the candles and yawning people then go home and have a lovely breakfast with leftovers from christmas eve which is the big day in sweden so i've heard this before i think there's um more scandinavian countries like the big thing is christmas eve 
um so i think um yeah countries like the uk and uh in north america christmas christmas eve no christmas eve is kind of like a pre thing and then it's christmas day which is like the big thing and i don't really know what happens on uh christmas like the second christmas day like it's called boxing day in the uk i'm not sure what it's called everywhere else but like in the uk boxing day is like for like when you're an adult it's nursing your christmas hangover day <laughs> but um, you know for kids you're playing with your toys and just like eating leftover chocolate leftover turkey um watching movies on the bbc I think Boxing Day is my favourite, but um, I love all of Christmas. We used to, when I was a kid, would go to church sometimes on um, Christmas Eve. We are not religious people, but I think my mum just really liked the sort of niceness of going to church and all lighting candles and it being very pretty and the singing and that kind of stuff so but it's not really something i do now um i am i live in harlem in the netherlands and we have a big christmas market i think it is somewhere around the 13th of december something like that maybe the 11th i don't remember oh sorry um but yeah that's always like really nice and you can go out and have uh, some glue vine and sometimes it even snows so that's really really nice i really enjoyed reading all of your christmas memories and traditions and i've closed the thread but it's still up on the podcast group uh, on ravelry so if you want to read what other people wrote there you know go ahead but so i had a winner uh I think it's Diana Seneca and I will contact you to get the Christmas bag over to you as soon as possible. Um, okay, I think... Oh no, wait, I have another thing. Because like a couple of months ago at the end of the summer I started a Stashmas knit along um, where you knit from Stash for Christmas. So I haven't really done a really good job at that knit along however um there is a finished object thread in the um Ravelry group and I have loved going through that where I wrote some stuff down um I've just seen colorwork socks sweaters hats beautiful mittens uh and I even spotted a Christmas onesie for a baby which was like wow amazing so, you know, head over there if you want to get some Christmas inspiration, knitting inspiration or gift knitting inspiration, really. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm going off to do some more sock knitting because that's like my thing at the moment. I love sock knitting. And I hope you will have a wonderful weekend. I am not going to do Vlogmas. Uh, Vlogmas is the thing where people post uh, videos every day for the month of December. I do not have it in me to record YouTube videos like every day for the entire month. Um, I, I don't think I have anything that would be worth watching anyway. So... Um, you know but people who are going to do that enjoy have fun um i suspect we will be hearing a lot of nutcracker music from those videos <laughs> because that seemed to be um uh, a theme going through the vlogmas videos from last year so uh, yeah i think they're always really fun to watch from other people i just don't have anything to add to it so i'm just gonna record podcasts as per usual whenever i have time whenever i have energy whenever i have um like enough knitting to show you guys because that's what you're here for i think um have fun, have a good weekend, and I'll see you again next time. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you are not subscribed subscribed yet, please consider to do so. 
Bye.